Ball leaves hand. B, prime ball is at peak. C, prime ball is at same place. as at time A, but on the way down. Let's move it down. And D, time just before the ball touches the ground. There are seven segments of time we need to consider here. Time A, between A and B. Time B, between B and C. Time C, between C and D. And time D. Now, the, this notation right here is something that you will see on old tests as well as right now. When you see the parentheses, around it, this is saying from time A to time B, not including time A, not including time B. So this would be from A to B, not including A or B. If I wanted to include A or B, or let's say I have something going from time A to time C, and I want to include A and C, I'd use a square bracket. So this is from A to C, including A and C. Or if I want to do A to C, not including A, but does include C, from A to C, not including A but including C. At this point, the word including doesn't look right. Now, when you start answering this question, or the, the last question of the first test, if you wish to write it out in sentence form, yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, but there are just shorter ways of doing it. This is just one format of doing it where we can use brackets or parentheses to indicate a, a range. Notice I didn't include B because B is between A and C, so I don't have to include it. If I just want to, if something happens at A and C, but not in between, then I would just write A comma C. Or some students leave off the comma and I know what they mean. But this is at times A and C but not in between. So we're going to go through the exercise. We're going to do it this way. I'm going to then introduce another way of expressing the exact same thing, uh, where it's perhaps a little less math notation-y. So the problem that I'm going to ask you to do, I want you to work on it on your own or with the person next to you. Uh, you know, feel free to talk to each other. At some point, I'm just going to call it. Some people will not finish at the same time if this is like a typical class. And so at some point, I'm just going to call it, even though some people will not be finished, some people will be. I want you to fill out the chart. Position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Where is it positive, zero, and negative? 
basically exactly what we were just doing, except now we're going up and down instead of left and right. So what I would expect here is for you to identify all the location or all the times that the ball is as a positive position. All the times the displacement is zero here. All the times the velocity is negative here, and so on. Give you about 10 minutes or so to work on that before we talk about it as a group. What is that under A, A, B, at what? At time, oops, I'm not sure. At time A and C, but not in between. Oh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to put both notations in the boxes. Yeah, with the correct letters. So somehow identify all the places in this box right here, this, all the places where the position is positive. Like the letters? And in between. And, and between. You know, that's why I was suggesting this kind of notation here might make it easier. Or oh. write it out, oh, or somehow, okay. it, somehow indicate where the position is positive. Okay. Including the in-betweens. In, including what? Including the in-betweens? Yes. Okay.
So if the ground is zero, how can anything be on the other side of the ground? What a trick question. Or uh, the simplest one in the group. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you tell us how long it takes for the ball to get to the ground? Or that doesn't matter? That doesn't matter. Okay. It takes whatever D minus A R has to do. Okay. And what makes velocity negative again? Going in the negative direction.
So when is the position positive? Every time. Now, what did you say? One is one in a positive direction. No. Position doesn't care about which way you're going, just cares about where you are. Like, as long as it's above zero? Yep. And I said zero was the ground. It's above the ground the entire time. Now, notice some people had it point D it was at the origin, but D is the time just before touching the ground. So it never actually touches the ground in the duration of the problem. <laughs> so from A to D. It's never zero, it's never negative in this problem. Okay. Now, I could have expressed it slightly differently over here where I've laid out the seven different, basically, time zones. I have the specific times that I mentioned and I have the in-betweens and it's positive the entire time. So I could have just done positive or in this display of it, it's greater than zero the entire time, so I could just shade in. The fact that it's positive and leave the other two just blank. I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this and why I'm doing three different displays now. All right, displacement. Where's the displacement equal to zero? A and C. A and C. Yep, both of them. Because the ball's in the exact same spot both times. Time ball's at the same place as time A, but moving downwards. So therefore, where is it positive? A, B, and C. Partial. A, B, and C. Between A and B? Not all the way. Not, I heard you say D. These and dog? No, I didn't say D. Oh, okay. Are positives just going down? Is it A and C not including? Or with the parentheses? It's, yeah, it's with parentheses. With parentheses, yeah. yeah. So it's positive. Displacement is positive as long as it's on the positive side of the starting point. Well, it starts here. So everywhere up above here is positive. From A to C, if you want to throw a B in the middle of it, that's fine. It's not necessary. Okay. From A to C, not including A and C because those are zero. Um, and then it's negative when you are on the negative side of the starting point. So it's A through C? Correct, A through C. Not including A and C. Correct. Why isn't it just B? Because C is the, the ball's at the starting point at C. Oh. The ball was thrown up and it comes back down. At, at time C, it, it's passing the starting point again. Okay. A through C, but not including A and C. So can it, we just say B? No, because what? For what, here? Yeah. No, yeah. All right, so let, let's come over to this chart. <laughs> All right, so it's zero at A and C. And what you want to do is represent the in-between by just marking this one as positive there. But B is just a brief moment in time when it's at the peak. We have the other, we have between A and B and between B and C that has to be, have to be accounted for. Oh, okay. It is positive all the way from A to C, not including A and C. Or down here, it is zero at A, let's see. And then negative when it's below the starting point. So C to D includes D, but not C. Why does it include D? Because it didn't touch the ground yet? Right. Well, even if it touched the ground, it was, that's still below the starting point. Oh, okay. And the biggest mistake I see students make on the, the long problem is mixing these up or thinking that they're identical. 
I will guarantee you that on the long problem, the last problem in the first test, these will not be the same. They're only the same if the origin and the starting point are the same thing, and they will not be in that problem. All right, velocity. Velocity cares about which way you are going. So first off, where's velocity zero? A, A, B, C, B, C, B, C. Why A? It's not moving. 